It's time again for the $30,000 Can Open Challenge, brought to you by American Car Care Centers in conjunction with CNA and the International Can Open Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to the Woburn Bowler Drome. John Holt with Dan Murphy, and after three weeks of our youth championships, we're back to the regular format this week. Uh, that's right, and the format, as you know, is our challengers match. We have two great ones coming up, and they'll bowl one game. The winner of that one game, of course, takes on Jeremy, our champ, in a two-game championship round. We'll speak with Jeremy Seaholm in just a minute, but first, the challengers standing by with Trina. Trina? Thank you, John. Our challengers today are two familiar faces. We've got Bobby Betancourt and Jeff Surrett. Bobby, we'll start with you. Welcome back. We haven't seen you in a year. It's good to see you back again. Yes, it's great to be back. Unfortunately, I get the bowl of champion back, but uh, it's great to be back. Well, tough draw for you today because he was the big prize winner for us last year, but you've gotten out of the challenger round once, so how are you feeling today? Uh, hopefully, just hopefully it falls for you. Uh, I'm going to have to bowl well to beat Jeff, so I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, our favorite police officer, good to have you back, <laughs> Bobby. And Jeff, you won the big enchilada last year, but this is the first time we've seen you this season. How'd you finally get onto the show? Oh, well, I bowled well. You know, luckily I came in second behind Bobby. Let's see what happens now. Well, we were saying we saw Dave earlier in the season, but now we've got you back. Now we just need to see Bob, Bobby back, and then we'll be all set. But how are you feeling today? You feeling you can take this Bobby over here? Well, I hope so. I've been bowling pretty well, so, you know, it's going to be a good match. All right, and you've got your new baby here with you today as well. So good luck to both of you, and back over to you, John. Trina, thank you. Jeremy, you had to wait three weeks uh, during the youth championships. Uh, you beat Dave Barber way back when, and now you're back to defend that title. Yeah, there's uh, two great bowlers waiting for me, so uh, <laughs> I just got to just gotta throw my ball. There's no defense, so. Any intimidation factor? You have the uh, big champion from last year sitting over there. Should he win? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no intimidation, Jeff. No he's, intimidation. he's ready for you. Well, good luck. We're back with the Challengers match right after this on CNA. Set for the Challengers match here in the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. Jeff Surrett, the overall champ from a year ago, on the right of your screen, will go first. Opposed today by Bobby Betancourt. Glad you're with us on CN8. The winner to meet Jeremy Seaholm in that two game championship match. Just one game here to decide the winner of the challenge. Jeff opens by dropping seven. Excuse me, three, leaving seven. And gives it a real good effort there on the spare shot, but still leaves the 8-10. So a nine for Jeff Surrett in the first box. <laughs> Using lanes 35 and 36, as we always do here at Woburn. Another good crowd on hand. Eight of ten go. <laughs> Leaves the two and the four. Chance for the first mark of the day. Yeah. And Jeff delivers. Uh, look at first look in a while of Bobby Betancourt. Been on the show several times, but bowls well, but has a tough time getting out of that challenges match. Right on the head pin to take out seven. Full on the head pin, but pins came back, knocked the three pin down, leaves himself the two, four, seven piece of wood out front. And he has a mark in the first box. Bobby, as uh, Trina reminded us in the open, a police officer and his professional life. Oh, big strike on spare. What a start for Bobby Betancourt. Two marks to open with. So he spoke about intimidation factor. Perhaps if Surrett advanced, take on Jeremy, joked about it, I should say. And clearly, Bobby not intimidated by the resume of Jeff Surrett. Here's a fill though of seven for Surrett after the spare in the second. Can't intimidate a police officer anyways. Can Absolutely you? not. <laughs> If you can, he's in the wrong profession. <laughs> Ooh, tried to catch a little piece of the wood out in front of the two and four and very nearly pulled it off. Total of eight in that box to score to a 34 for a Jeff. Oh. 
Oh, and there's a strike of his own in the fourth frame for Jeff Surratt. Remember, that triple strike pool, $1,000 is still out there, and you see the replay of that strike off the ball of Jeff Surratt. And we split that $1,000 with anyone who has a triple strike throughout the season. Third box now for a Bobby and still filling up that second box after the uh, strike. That's the first half of the fill. You see the four horsemen to the right plus the eight pin. And almost pulls that off for three in a row. Just the six left. Good start for Bobby Betancourt. He'll leave his first pinup of the day. 48, so up some 14 pins through three. Now opposite the strike from Jeff Surrett here in the fourth. Oh, he gets a lucky break, a head pin. Last one to go down for that strike. Bobby says he hit the right spot. Well, let's see where the right spot was. It's on the three pin. And the head pin, the last one to go. Jeff Surratt on the strike. He almost, that falls backwards. He's got one too. 36, lane 36 has been good to the bowler so far. Three don't, of the four uh, attempts. Don't like that wood. Strikes. He took care of it though. So he has three marks, spare strike in the fourth and spare in the fifth. So spare on strike as he goes to box six. Back to that lucky lane, 36. Oh, right in the pocket, everything but the six pin. And we'll have a first uh, Earl sighting, I believe. Gotta take care of that wood. The Earl of Bowling. <laughs> you know, the crowd makes him earn that applause once the job is done. There it is. Second ball now for Jeff. Sliding off to the right, missing the six pin. A rarity for Jeff Surrett. Nine there in the sixth box. Not a Bobby, and he had a strike in the fourth. Strike in the second and the fourth, so a big fill opportunity in the fifth now. Gets yep. four to go. Another ball coming on that strike. Pulled that one left a little. In the pocket and spare on strike, matching Jeff Surrett's marks. Marks in four of five for Bobby. You see the replay of the spare. Buries it in the 1-3 pocket. Clears out those six spins for his fourth mark in five boxes. And it's a fill of six. Open for just the second time is Bobby Betancourt. And we've got a terrific match right now, an 11 pin advantage for Bobby Betancourt, 93-82. Four boxes to go. The 04-05 champ, winding himself down. No, he's looking at the two, four, five, seven in the left-hand corner, and then the ten pin all by itself over in the right piece of wood next to the two and five. Oh, through the pin! Oh, twice! <laughs> Just missing the ten pin for the spare. He's up to ninety-one consecutive nine boxes. Out of the often crucial eighth box. Oh, a big strike in the eighth. And he delivers at a crucial time. You see the replay. Picks on the one three pocket again. Just tripping the four pin for the strike. Bobby Betancourt leading by 11, facing a nine box, and then, of course, that strike. That one right in the pocket, but leaves himself the five, seven, eight, ten. Nice. Possibilities with the wood. Problem pins probably are the seven and ten. Oh, no problems at all. Great shot. 
He has bowled very well and consistently today. See, right on the red line, ball goes over and takes out, I believe, with the 10 pin. The wood does the damage on the rest of them, but terrific spare. And that is a fill of seven. Every pin important. The one, two, and the 10 standing. So he'll be open in the eighth, uh, leading by 19 pins, I believe. 120 to 101, however, Jeff Sorrett will have some pins added to that total in the eighth because he had a strike in the eighth, filling it up now the next two balls. Jeff needs a decent fill and at least one more mark. Oh boy, didn't want that. The one and the five. So chances are he'll be open in the ninth. Well, I say that almost. <laughs> but he'll have to mark in the tenth. Now at 120 himself, but that's through nine, so just the tenth box remaining. He really would need a mark and a decent fill to force Bobby Betancourt to get at least one mark. He's got a chance with a four and the eight. Oh, just the eight in the back row. Bobby Betancourt is just going to have to stay away from a bad frame. Terrific, 129 though, but not, might not be enough. Bobby Four Bet marks en route to that 129. Good game for Jeff, but as you say, Bobby's just been a little bit better. Yep, Bobby needs a total of 10 pins in these two frames. Has nine of them right now. That's good enough for a tie. <laughs> and we'll extend things a little bit longer. Jeremy Seaholm to take on the winner, and that winner, Bobby Peck. There's the win. Good thing he didn't need another mark. He buried the first ball in both of these frames and didn't get much to shoot at. But, uh, oh well, he'll make that. <laughs> Terrific shot in the 5'10". Gives him 139 plus this ball to finish up. Seven more. 146 to 129, a 17-pin victory. Bobby Vancourt beats last season's champ, and now he gets to meet the reigning champ, Jeremy Seaholm, when we come back right here on CM. Championship match. It is the defending champ, Jeremy Seaholm versus Bobby Betancourt, an impressive 146-129 winner over Jeff Surratt. John Holt, Dan Murphy, and our C8 crew from the Woburn Bowler Trome. Jeremy won three weeks ago. In between, we have brought you our youth championships during the holiday season, back to the regular format today. And Jeremy shooting for his second win in a row. Drops nine to start. Well, that was a tough piece of wood, but he made it look easy. Sparing the first for our champ, trying to make it two victories in a row. Defeated young Dave Barber to earn that championship and that title. So he'll fill it with six. The four pin rocking a little bit, but staying up. Trying to split the three six. Actually went inside, used the wood, got the four, but not the seven. Jeremy from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Nine box. 25 the total. Two games. We add up the score from two games for each bowler to uh, determine the champ. 
Bobby with that 125 average, well above it. Challenges around with 146. Takes out eight. It's a five and eight. Wants a quick start like he did in the Challengers match. Got it. Spare for Bobby Betancourt. Here's his fill, second box. A little full, but he got a break. Drop seven. Two, four, seven left, but a tough piece of wood in between. It's almost like you might have to miss that two pin. Yeah. Flew the two pin right around the four because of the angle of the wood in between. Not leaving anything up though. 10 box to boost the score to 27. Early two pin advantage. Both bowlers marking with spares in the first. Now back to Jeremy. He wants that four pin to go. Three, four, six. Second straight nine box for Jeremy to 34. <laughs> On the head been that time to get six to go. Yeah, three, six, ten on the right with a two pin. Piece of wood in between the three and the six. Not much there. Three through four frames. First game of our championship match. It's a theme of nines for Jeremy. Three in a row now. Back to Officer Petcourt. Gets half of them to go. Five up, five down. Three more. One in the seven. 36 and a two pin advantage for our challenger. You mentioned uh, Bobby had been unable to get over that hump getting out of the challenger's round, but he obviously is a terrific score of 146. Jeff Surrett bowled well as well, 129, but some 17 pins short of what Bobby did. So just those opening marks uh, so far, then uh, both bowlers open in uh, two, three, and four. And we're uh, even Steven, 43 apiece. Once that seven pin to go. Instead, it sticks around with a drop of seven. There's what do you what do you know? Another nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right if he's playing poker, I guess, but Oh, there's something different. Strike in the sixth. All ten of them. Second mark for Jeremy. Take a look at it. You see the replay of the strike. Didn't stay up very long. Back over to Bobby. Strike of his own. This it, matches come alive. It's really strange how bowlers, they get into a rut and they're not getting marks and all of a sudden his opponent gets a mark and he'll come right back with one of his own as you see the replay of that strike, the five and the 10, the last two to go. Looking for the double strike. First half of the field gets him eight. Tough piece of wood out in front. 
If he elects to use that one, he has to come up really high. He could go buy it and use the one in the back. Spare on the strike. Wall. Bobby Betancourt heating up an 11 pin advantage. A lot more bowling to come. We step aside back with the finish of game one of the championship match right after this on CN8. And a, a good one between uh, Jeremy Seaholm and Bobby Betancourt and Port and Phil coming up in the seventh after a strike for Jeremy. Back in box six. Here we go. Missing the head pin to the right, leaving the four horsemen on the left. The one, two, four, and seven. He gets a so spare on strike of his own after Betancourt did it in five and six, Jeremy in six and seven. I guess they just needed to get each other going. And still get some eight, maybe nine, no, eight. Decent fill when missing the head pin. Leaves the head pin and the seven pin and the piece of wood in front of the seven should help. Missing the head. Misses again to the left, so another nine box for Jeremy. Broke out of that little rut with the marks in six and seven, but back with a nine and a total of 99. Now Bobby Betten Betancourt will fill his spare in the sixth. So that's eight. Head pin and a nine pin left. Trying to go three in a row. You've got one in the back row, the nine. So a one pin advantage through seven. Now opposite the nine box in the eighth. Competitive close championship match taking shape. Four horsemen to the right, one, three, six, and ten. Yeah. And nice there. With a little drama attached. Now to Jeremy. Ninth, and he's going to take out eight. Piece of wood in front of the three and the five. Actually, the wood cost him the shot. The kingpin still staring him down. Got it with the third ball. It's a 10 box to 109. One frame remaining game one for Jeremy. Drops eight, it's four, seven left. Good spare opportunity for our champ. This is flush on the four pin, drove that straight back, nothing touched the seven, so he'll be open the last three frames. Bobby Battencourt working on a spare when he gets up. A good day for Bobby so far. Big impressive win in the challengers round, now in position to take a solid lead into the second half of the championship match. There you go, fill of eight. Now that one string challenges match could be tough. I mean, Bobby's got certainly got the credentials. Yeah, high single of 200, high triple of 475. So uh, the talent is there. You just got to get by that challenges match and get into the championship match, and maybe you can run some in a row. But I'm sure our champ is going to have something to say about that. Long ways from over. We'll see just how big Bobby's lead is going into game two. Straight up the gut to take out four. 
Yeah, you may try to the ward in the two pin on the left. but the seven. So open in nine and ten. It's nine pin advantage and keeps it, knocks this one down at over nine. 128, 119. Up by nine is Bobby Betancourt. We take a break. Back with the start of game two on the $30,000 Candleton Challenge right after this. Right now, it's a nine pin advantage for Bobby Betancourt, today's challenger. And he'll lead us off for the second and final game of the championship round. You can see Jeremy in the uh, bottom corner of the screen, wondering if he can maintain his title. Six down, four up for Bobby. Open here in the first. Pins out to get all 10, though. Nataline, 36. Oh, big strike. In the second for Bobby Battencourt. Tremendous amount of consistency from Bobby today. No long stretches without marks. Right back as our champ drops nine, leaves the four pin. Got it. Got it. Spare for Jeremy in the first. Gonna be a real good finish. That one got away from him. Just three on the spare. Six more. Box is all said and done. Now Bobby coming off the strike in the second. Important fill situation. The next two balls. Four horsemen left minus the of four, which falls late. First half of the fill gets seven. Can he get spare on strike? Two. This another big crowd at Woburn Bolodrome for our tapings. That is a nine. I hope everyone had a uh, safe Christmas. Now four horsemen over to the right this time. Along with that, I guess we wish everyone a happy new year as well. The traditional bowl games, forget about them. We're talking about bowling That's right. for New Year's. So there you go, a 10 box in the fourth has Bobby do 47. He's extended his lead by some five pins, but was open in three and four. Now Jeremy. Oh, will he get the strike? Nine pin. Not going to go down. Piece of wood in front of it should be no problem for Jeremy. Mark in the third, a spare for Jeremy. Now here's a big ball coming up. Trails by 13, minus this ball. And there goes nine of them. To back spares in his plans. No one missed to the right. Yeah. 
So it's a four pin advantage overall, five pin lead for Jeremy in this game, but he's down four in the big picture to Bobby Betancourt, six boxes remaining. Oh, another big strike by Bobby Betancourt. It was in the one-two pocket too. It's usually for a right-hander. That's not the best pocket, but he just scrambles these candle pins for another strike. The second mark and the second strike of this game. And there's eight. This will count two towards that fill. If he catches the head pin, he'll probably convert it for the spare. The wood looks pretty favorable in the back. Oh, he just, oh, I kind of put the <laughs> whammy on that. Light on the head pin and leaves the eight pin. See what Jeremy can do to counter that strike in the fifth. Oh, I was waiting for the four pin to get out and leave the six ten, but the six fell into the ten, leaving the, just the four. With the wood right in front. Got it. Spare for Jeremy. This is a tight one. No one seems to be able to throw that one knockout punch. Bill gets him. Eight, oh. Nine. With just the head pin left. Looking for his second straight spare, fourth in six boxes. Yes, the champ bowling very well. Four boxes to go. You don't want to miss this finish. Back with more on CNA right after. This. Ed Woburn for the finish. Jeremy Seaholm on the left, hoping to retain his title. But Bobby Betancourt has something to say about it, and right now he has the lead by some four pins, plus whatever uh, Jeremy can knock down in the fill to add to his total in the sixth and potentially take the lead. But here we go. Little full in the head pin, two, four, seven with an, an, on the left, and then the triangle of six, nine, ten on the right. And then right up that empty spot in the middle. Total of eight. Open again, just two marks, both strikes in this game for Bobby, two and five. Now the eight. Wants one of those to go, four or the six. I, don't, I think I'd probably try to go right hand tip of that front wood on the right, right next to the channel, and hopefully you got something coming off the wall, the six and then the possibly the four. One on the inside. starting to turn in the favor of the champ just a bit. Well, it's a big ball here, as you said, John. You can take the lead with this ball, but more importantly, he's opposite two open frames. If he were to put another mark or two up, he could take control. And that is a fill of some six pins. Enough to take the lead temporarily, anyways. Now opposite the eight and the ten. Oh, that close to make it two in a row, or three in a row, I should say. And that would have been a good one. Like I said, no one can seem to have that one knockout punch. Mark there would certainly have helped Jeremy. He now leads by four. And if he can mark here in the eighth, he'll uh, make it a challenge for Bobby with two boxes to go. Won't be easy. Plus to a five in the right hand corner. Three, five, six, nine, and ten. Oh, 
<laughs> to open frames himself in seven and eight. Okay, here we go. Final two, four pins. Is the deficit facing Bobby Betancourt? Any mark will be significant in swaying the outcome one way or another. Precious marks now. There's that one-two pocket that he got a couple strikes with, but this time he leaves himself the six-seven. And no wood. Wow. Doesn't sound bad when you say six-seven, but <laughs> six is way to the right. Miles apart. Oh, almost cut that over. All pins important now. Ten. Nine. Nine, Nine bucks. Hit the hit the wood. In the His tenth and final box now. Hasn't had a mark since back in the fifth when he had a strike. This game right through off the middle. The wrong time. So Jeremy, <laughs> with that four pin advantage in the final two boxes, a mark will ice it for him. You just gotta stay away from the real bad frame. Gets seven. Betancourt's 241, right now 236 for Jeremy, our champ, so six pins. There it is. The victory. champ remains the champ. All right, victory number two. And one more ball for Jeremy. Those four marks over the first six boxes in game two, significant. <laughs> Bobby without the marks down the stretch, and it's a five pin victory for Jeremy. Championship number two, two times in a row. We're back to wrap it up for Wolverine right after this. Bob up, Jeremy Seaholm wins for a second straight time and uh, had to beat a guy who was bowling pretty well in Bobby Betancourt. We'll speak with Jeremy in just a second, but first, the runner-up standing by with Trina. Trina? Thank you, Dan. I'm back over here with Jeff Surrett and Bobby Betancourt. And Jeff, wow, a little bit of a difference from last year, but as we were saying earlier, you won the money when it counted. Today, you get $150 from the ICBA, not quite the $5,000 you won in the finale last year, but um, what happened? Bobby bowled good. Got the brakes, and I didn't. Well, you know he's a damn first police officer, so you would, you just didn't want to get in trouble, right? Yeah, I had to let him off the hook, you know, because next, you know, he'll catch me off the hook next time, you know. Well, especially since you're a FedEx delivery driver, it's important to not have those tickets piling up, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. And Bobby, you looked fantastic against Jeff, and then in the second string. It, it all fell apart a little bit in the championship match. What happened there? Yeah, I just lost. I lost the head pin, and then I couldn't find it. Then when I finally found it, my ball was going through. So uh, it happens in bowling. Sometimes you're on, and sometimes you're off. And Jeremy bowled well. He had a good day, so that happens. Yeah. Well, we were happy to see you back again this year. You get $200 from the ICBA today, so thank you for coming back. We'll see you both. We, you have plenty of time to come back again, guys. Back over to you, John. Trina, thank you. Jeremy, you had to earn this one. Uh, you didn't get Jeff, you got Bobby, and he was bowling well, and he yeah. led going into that second game. He did, but you, you can never count yourself out. You just you just got to go back, hit the head pin, get, you, get your marks, get your tens. That's where most matches are won, on nine and tens, and unfortunately I was able to do that. Well, everybody knows I'm probably about the smartest person in the world, but maybe you can help <laughs> me out, because I don't have the answer to this. It seems when you struggle, he struggled. When he started the mark, then you started the mark. How does that happen? Uh, that's my plan. 
<laughs> I slipped something into his coffee. <laughs> now, I, now, now I'm a little smarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. We'll see you back next week. Thank you. Jeremy Seaholm wins again. We thank you for watching. That'll do it for the $30,000 Candleman Challenge. For Dan Murphy and our CNA crew, I'm John Holt. Thanks for watching.